the, uh, don't have a sales pitch with me, so I'll crack straight on. Um, I'd like to introduce you to somebody that is an absolute hero of mine, he's a man called John Dunton. He was born quite a long time, in the seventh time, long time ago in the 17th century. The slide will come up quite soon, unless we didn't time them, which in which case. There he is, born in 1659, which is a very long time ago, a long time before copyright or any of those sort of things. Fabulous hair, I think you'll agree. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about John Dunton and why he's a personal hero of mine. Um, first of all, he started off life, he's the son of a vicar, and he was going to be a vicar. He was a failed vicar. He went off, he couldn't learn Latin or Greek, and in those days that meant you're not going to be a vicar. <laughs> Terribly sorry about that. So his father said to him, look, we really can't do anything else with you. You're going to have to go into publishing book selling. That's the only thing that you can possibly do. And he became an apprentice bookseller, which was great for a while. And he kind of got involved in what would turn out to be something a bit like a sort of a trade union. And nearly got fired several times. Kind of just about got through it. Uh, and became actually a bookseller. In those days, bookshops looked like this. Basically, they made the books and then they sold the books. It's a fairly simple, straightforward process with lots of people doing lots of things, and he would have been that guy there. Um, and essentially the way that things worked there before copyright, people would sort of go, I need something to copy. What can I do? I, I need a book. How do I get a book? Um, as a bookseller, when you started out, you might buy a, a manuscript from somebody. Um, and then you would take that manuscript and you'd spend ages turning it into a book. It was a very, oh, that slide's an interesting one. Don't quite know why that's there. Um, I think that's there to remind me that it was a dog-eat-dog -dog world. That's what publishing was like then, because basically people would, I have heard, people would basically pay somebody to write and copy, and then that copy would get passed around, and then other books would be made and get different versions of the same book. The idea was, you've got some copy, you turned it into a lovely book, you printed lots and lots and lots of those books, so you printed six, seven hundred copies of those books. At this point, you had no customers, you were just in a shop printing books. You printed lots and lots of those books. You then took those books around to the other booksellers, and you said to them, have you got this book? And they go, we haven't got that book. And you go, I'll swap you my book for some of your books. And so you do a bit of a swap seat. So it was all very like that. And eventually you end up with what looked a bit like that, was a load of books, which was great. This obviously was very time consuming and um, elements of failure crept in. He wasn't a very good businessman, he didn't really get it and nobody wanted to sell him their copy because he didn't have any money. He had a brilliant idea. He, won he said, actually that's, and it doesn't fit on, but it says exit bookseller, enter author to play all the parts. Um, you do need a good imagination. <laughs> so what he decided was, sod this, I'm going to write my own stuff. And this was a bit like punk rock. This was a bit like, no, hang on, you don't need to learn music, you can just play stuff. He thought, sod it, I'm just gonna, I need copy, I've got to make books to swap with these other guys to get any books, I'll write my own books. And he just started writing books. And one of the things he, and books, and he thought, well, I actually have a better idea than books. He did some books. He created a thing called the Athenian Mercury, which was basically a, it was a daily newspaper that was handed out in coffee shops, and people would write into him with questions. He would answer the questions and then publish it the next day. And this was fantastic, and it became a real thing. It was exactly like Google, actually, a little bit less high tech. Um, so this was caught on and went like wildfire through the coffee shops of London, but people just copied him. So you got the Spectator, you got the Gentleman's Magazine, you've got the Tatler. These all sprung out of his great idea to create this magazine. And essentially, they watered the market down and it failed. And he tried reprinting it, he tried different versions, never quite worked. Then he thought, I know, I'm such an interesting person. I shall write my own life story and call it The Life and Errors of John Dunton. And actually what he wrote in the end was one of the very first proper autobiographies. People copied him. Um, so you've got people like Defoe and Swift and Lawrence Stern writing these stories of life. They became a big thing. Dunton was the first guy to do that. He, they nicked his ideas. He gave Defoe and Swift their first ever jobs. John Dunton invented pretty much magazines, journals, travelogues, autobiographies. He created the FAQ. He was the first person to employ women as writers and create a women's journal. He invented the novel, just about. He died in 1733 from the stone. God only knows what that is, but it sounds really nasty. After a very long illness, he published 600 books and he died penniless because he could never protect, protect his ideas. One of the world's greatest writers, innovators and publishers, unsung, completely out of print, forgotten. Till now.
Sorry. I give you two thumbs up, ladies and gentlemen.